This is Elaine from Antelope Beads. Thanks for being here today. Uh, we are going to talk about using some of the two millimeter components new to Antelope Beads. Some really interesting clasps, findings, and um, as usual, I'm going to show you a few tricks uh, regarding how to use these. And so, uh, let's go ahead and get started. I'm coming to you from, as you can guess, pretty close to Walt Disney World. And so, um, anyway, let's get started. And, all right, here we go. Okay. Okay. Lighting is not perfect here, um, but we are just gonna, gonna kind of work with what we've got. Um, and so I'm going to just start by talking about, hello, Pammy, how are you? And Kelly, um, just, you know, let me know what, what cool things are going on in antelope beads world, if you, if you would. So, okay, so some of the components, first of all, we've got some clasps here. We've got this little clasp, very unusual. We've got a little starfish clasp. There we go. And then for one of the samples, I use this little heart clasp. Here we go. Really cute. And the thing when I first saw these is how do you use them? So I, I, I think we're going to kind of, first of all, just talk about how to attach things to them without using a bunch of jump rings. So we've got the clasp. The other thing I'm going to use today is this is like a half round bracelet component with a hook on it. Really, really interesting and pretty. Uh, we're going to use that one today. And then some of the other things we have are just a whole assortment of um, round beads, uh, six, eight millimeter, different sizes of round beads. I've used actually some of these in a couple of the samples already. Uh, just go right over the two millimeter leather. So that's really nice. And then we have things like this curved tube bead. You know, I could just run a piece of two millimeter round leather through there, put a clasp on it, and I could be done, you know, with a bracelet. And then the other thing that's kind of nice is that we have end caps that will hold two strands of two millimeter leather. Uh, and so just a little bit more substantial, still pretty delicate. And the other thing that I, of course, I like, because I like charms, is we've got a little charm holder. Um, and uh, so, um, and we're gonna add some charms to some of these. We've got some two millimeter end caps. And then the last is this, and I actually used this for one of the uh, pieces that we did with the waxed cord. Uh, and just ran head pins through either side to make loops on either side. But this makes a really nice focal for a bracelet using two millimeter beads. So that's just a little bit of what we've got here. And so I think I'm gonna start with what I really think is probably the simplest piece, and that is using this component right here, this bracelet component. So what I did was, and I sort of got this started so I wouldn't spend all your time watching me add beads onto a piece of leather, is I started at the end by just tying an overhand knot. I folded, I think about, um, probably about four feet of two millimeter leather in half, just tied an overhand knot to make a knot, and then that knot can just slip right into that loop. So that's the end of the ending on that side. And I'm gonna show you how to finish the other end. I'm gonna just move this out of the way so you can see a little bit better. So, and what I've done here, just really simple, is I've added three six millimeter jump strings on one strand and a big hole crazy lace agate bead. This is an eight millimeter bead on the other strand. And then I kind of brought the two strands together with three rings. Now. Is this going to slide around? Absolutely. No big deal. It'll actually stay together better than you think because 
when the beads kind of stretch the leather apart like this, they kind of lock these other beads into, these rings into, into place, but I don't really care if it moves around. So, and just to show you really quickly what we did, and I alternated the strands that I added beads onto is, I'm just gonna add one of these big hole gemstones, and these are fabulous for the two millimeter leather. They, they are, just a tad bigger than two millimeter holes, so they do slide around. I'm gonna show you in a couple minutes how to keep those in place, um, but they just, wow. I mean, just all kinds of possibilities with these big hole gemstone beads. Cause, and then there I put two beads, you know, two, excuse me, three six millimeter jump rings on the other strand, and then I'm going to, I want this to be a triple wrap bracelet. So I'm gonna take the length of this, which I think is about three and a half inches, and I'm gonna have two more wraps, seven inches each, so that'll be 14 inches. So I'm looking for about 17 and a half inches for the beaded component here. <laughs> And so I, of course, cheated and already marked the leather. And so to finish this, um, you know, I don't, a lot of people will just tie, you know, tie an overhand knot and then just leave these two ends out. That, of course, bothers me immensely. So what I'm going to do, and I, I do this with like all my macrame bracelets, is I'm going to start an overhand knot like this just with the, with the strands, and I've got this knot set at that 17 and a half inch point. And then what I'll do is I'm gonna take one of the strands, do, 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 okay, one of the strands, put it back through that knot. So I've just strung that other strand back through the knot. I'm gonna tighten this loop, okay, like that, and I'm gonna adjust it, okay. I've got, so now I've got a little knot on the other end, and, um, then what I'll do is take a take a little lobster clasp. I, I can you can use a bunch of different kinds of clasps. Probably a bigger lobster would have been better. This is the 12 millimeter, and I can just use a six millimeter jump ring. Open up that jump ring, stick it in the loop, and close it up again. Then what I can do is just trim off these tails. Here we go, just trim off the tails, flush with the knot, and hit it with the uh, super tight glue. And in this case, I'm gonna use the stuff in the red tube, the stuff that's a little bit more, um, I, I guess I wanna say watery. Um, I don't need the thicker stuff for this particular thing. So what I've got when I finish is, oh, one other thing I guess I need to add some rings to the other side of the bracelet. So I'm gonna add one six millimeter jump ring to this hole right here. And that's gonna be maybe a little tight to get my clasp in there. And so I'll just add another six millimeter ring. Here we go. So now what I've got is this. So I've got my, oh, take it back. Jeez Louise, okay, I, I'm, boy, I just uh, found a major design flaw here, um, and that is that I really, jeez Louise, the bracelet component is the clasp, okay. Excuse me while I, I completely redo this project. So in this case, what I'm gonna do is run that, I'm gonna go ahead and start my knot for the end, okay like this, and then I'm gonna run my loop right through the other side of the bracelet. I don't know why I thought you needed a clasp for this. Must have been a late night last night. Okay, here we go. Okay, here we go. Okay, and there it's attached right here. So again, I'm gonna hit it with some glue, dink, dink, and then I can wrap it. And these things, of course, can adjust. All the beads can adjust anywhere I want them to be. Um, uh, the Okay, so somebody asked, uh, six millimeter jump ring 
wound it, open up with with use. You know, a, a, a six. These are 18 gauge six millimeter jump rings. So there's two things. I'm going to stop for just a second and talk about jump rings. There are two things that dictate the strength of a jump ring. Uh, one is the size of it, and actually. Um, a four millimeter jump ring with a with a tighter loop will be um, more secure than a than a bigger jump ring of the same gauge. But these are 18 gauge. If, if I got them in here, these are 18 gauge jump rings. They are really not gonna gonna come apart. I mean, they I I can't say I've ever had a problem with this. So if you're using a larger jump ring, you really want to shoot for the heavier gauge. I think the uh, antelope beads um, 10 millimeter jump rings are like 16 gauge. They are heavy, so they are not going anywhere. So, okay, so I've got this. Hopefully that answers your question, Leanne. Let me know if you need a little more information. Um, so I've got, you know, the bracelet attached to this end, and I can wrap one, two times, and then I just fasten it by putting that loop in here, and here is my finished bracelet. And it's actually going to sit with that uh, bracelet focal on the side. That won't be on the top. It will actually be on the side of your, your wrist. So that's project number one. Now that I've managed to re-engineer it right on the spot. Okay, so the second one, um, and this is sort of the most uh, elegant one, but, but also kind of the easiest, is where we take anywhere between, uh, you know, seven inches. Okay, just couldn't see how I attached the bar. Okay, so, so I'm gonna do that again, okay. Hang on just a second, Joan, okay? I'm just gonna take this apart because I didn't glue it yet and do this again. All right, okay, so what I'm going to do here is tie an overhand knot with these ends, okay? Um, and Pammy, I'm gonna guess I used about 36 to 40 jump rings, okay? Okay, and here, so I've tied an overhand knot but I haven't tightened it. So what I'll do is take one of the ends, stick it through the hole in the clasp. Let's see if I can make sure that you can see that. So I'm going to put that end right through the hole. There we go. And then I'm going to put that end back into the knot before I tighten the knot. Okay. And then once I tighten the knot, and glue it, I have to glue it. I mean, there's just, yeah, there we go. So so that's what I've got now. I've got this knot right up at the end with this loop. I'm gonna make sure that's really snug. And then I'm going to trim the ends and just hit them with some of the super tight glue. And again, it's going to be the um, the stuff in the red tube, the little slightly more, more uh, watery stuff. Okay, there we go. Okay, and so then the other side where I started, I started with this just an overhand knot at the very beginning. Um, that becomes my clasp when I just hook it in there. And again, this is a triple wrap bracelet, so when it's finished, it just kind of looks like this. And I can add more beads, fewer beads. Um, or, you know, essentially very little, you know, just straight leather strands would look cool too with this. So nice, nice look. Okay, there we go. Okay, so the second one, and this one, I have really gotten some mileage out of this design, so I really want to share this with you, is I've simply taken a long piece of leather, and this is going to be um, anywhere between a three and five wrap bracelet for a man or a woman. This one, you know, if I was going to do this for a man, I might use a little less silver, um, or I might use less of the jump rings or, you know, so on and so forth. But all I've done is I'm adding in components that fit on the leather. Now you're asking, how do we keep them from all sliding around? And I've just got a pretty random 
series of stuff here. So I'm going to set that aside and I've got another project that I'm working on here and I'm going to use this light turquoise leather. Love this leather. I'm going to use my very favorite gemstones, a mazonite. And I mentioned last week that I really like a mazonite with rosewood. So there's some rosewood. Um, and I, I decided um, that I was going to use both matte and the um, regular finish beads. The matte finish has some lighter looks. And this is all, Pammy, this is all two millimeter leather. This, the whole focus of this is how to use those two millimeter leather components. So I've got a piece of leather and I'm going to do maybe a three wrap bracelet, which is going to be a total of, um, again, it's uh, one mil two millimeter leather. Every single one of these is two millimeter leather because those are the components that we're using. So I've got um, gemstones here. I've got the amazonite, a couple different strands. And um, like I said, the, the, there are so many choices. There's, you know, tiger eye, there's lapis, there's, you know, and then there's round wood beads in six and eight millimeter that go right on these two. These are the little six millimeter uh, beads with two millimeter holes. So here's so here's all my collection of beads. So, so what I'll do as a stopper is I'm going to use these little tiny, tiny um, O-rings. Let's see if I can, where are they? There, oh, there we go. Okay, hang on. There, okay. Um, so these little tiny O-rings, and I'm going to get them on the leather. And you're sitting there going, lady, you're crazy. How's that going to work, you know? So, um, okay, let's see. I'm going to get the, the camera up a little bit. We're just adjusting things on the fly there. Is that better, Joan? Does that look a little better? Okay. Um, okay, so I've got these little, little baby O-rings. I've got my big hole beads. I've got some jump rings. And I've got some little different uh, size two millimeter beads. And in this piece, I decided right in the middle um, of my 21 inch expanse, I'm gonna add this bead in and it's gonna be kind of the focal for the bracelet. So, okay, so what I'll do to start with is add a, add a little bumper on one side. So here's the trick. To, and, and I know these are super pointy, uh, chain or round nose pliers, but you can really kind of use anything. I've got a little gray jump ring here. I am going to stick it onto my round nose pliers. Okay, just like that. Okay, and then I open it up and I can put the leather. There it goes. Come on, baby. Okay, it's going to go. There we go. Right through that ring. Okay, there we go. Okay, and then I can slide it down and position it wherever I want it. So that's that's it for that. So then I'm going to just add a collection of stuff. You know, I might add about three uh, little four millimeter jump rings here, and then maybe I'll add um, a, a a matte amazonite bead here. And let's do a rosewood and come on, there we go, there, rosewood. And the amazonite just has enough brown in it so that it goes really nicely. And then maybe I'll add this, I think this is a six millimeter uh, silver bead. So I've got that little expanse. To hold those in, sh in place, what I'll do is I'll just add another jump ring. So again, I'm going to stick it over the pliers, open it up, and put that leather in. And these are these rings are perfect for the two millimeter leather. Okay, okay, and they are the baby tiny uh, three millimeter. Uh, the baby O rings are three millimeter O rings on antelope beads. Okay. Someone's just helping me out here. There we go. Now, if I wanted, you know, I can add a few beads, you know, maybe some jump rings. If you want some movement in this piece. OK, 
okay? And then just go ahead and add another O-ring. I'm kind of liking the gray with this, okay? Here we go. Put that in the pliers, okay? Put the leather through, okay? Do, 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 okay. So next week I will be back with my better lighting system. Now I've got the O-ring kind of spread out a little bit so these beads can kind of move around so a little bit of movement is good. Okay, so the cool thing about this um, is that, you know, I've got this huge, this is, you know, basically I think it's, um, uh, I don't know, 21 inches worth of leather and beads. What I can do is I can wear it as a wrap bracelet or I can wear it as a necklace. So it's kind of convertible, pretty cool. And um, again, this is something you can make for men. For this particular piece, I decided I was gonna go ahead and finish it with the, the little um, two millimeter uh, bead caps, got a jump ring on here. And uh, same thing on the other side, and I've attached a clasp um, for a guy, you know, I might use, uh, you know, more of an antique silver clasp. Uh, Antelope Beads also has two millimeter magnetic clasps, which are, are what I have been using up until now um, for this particular style of, of bracelet slash necklace. So, so really good men and women, lots and lots and lots of options. So, all right, we don't need to finish that anymore. Okay, so that's project number two. Project number three is going to be a relatively simple bracelet. Let me get all this stuff out of the way. Um, with one of these cool new toggle clasps. Love these clasps. They're, um, for, for a bunch of reasons, they are very interesting. And Pammy, I, yeah, I, I did not glue but yes, you would you would need to glue um, the bead cap on, and and next time I do something, I will, you know, get that glue out and make sure that you see how that goes. So yeah, okay. So um, here's this bracelet. I know I love this clasp too, Leanne. Love these clasps. This one is killer for a guy. And then the one I'm going to 